Star Trek Beyond, released in 2016, did not do as well as Paramount had hoped it would. And even though, in some cases, the movie did not do any successful business at the theater, they were still going ahead with their plans for a Star Trek IV. But with various production delays, disputes between the actors and the movie studios, and then a tragedy taking place among the cast, this Star Trek IV has been plagued with delay and tragedies. Now, there are stories out that Star Trek IV will either be continuing or they will be rebooting it. But it looks like Paramount is very much wanting another Star Trek movie. But with that said, there's also stories out there about the franchise itself and what may or may not be happening. There's even talk that Star Trek uh, Academy and Star Trek Section 31 may not happen at all. So why don't we take a look at some of the information that's out there and have a little discussion. So why don't we start off our Star Trek movie news with this little report coming from Screen Rant. Star Trek movie reboot, report, excuse me, reboot reportedly a top priority for Paramount after strike ends. As the WAG writer's strike ends, Paramount is reportedly prioritizing the Star Trek movie, and a new report hints it could be a reboot. Okay, so it's pretty much known that even before Star Trek Beyond was released in the theater, they had already talked about another Star Trek, Star Trek IV. And that one, the idea behind that would be Kirk, where Kirk would meet his dad somehow. Now... Through various reasons, the film has met with disastrous delays with productions and actors' problems. It's just been one disaster after another, and I think at this point, Paramount has, is just ready to scrap the Star Trek IV project and move on to possibly rebooting the series. However, a new report from Variety about studio ramping up TV and movie production post-strike indicates that Paramount's next Star Trek movie may actually be a reboot. The quote from Variety article is below. Okay, okay so Variety is Variety's wording that Paramount has a planned reboot for Star Trek is a new wrinkle to the ongoing saga, Star Trek Force development hell. It's possible that the reboot is a mistaken word choice. If Paramount indeed intends to reunite J.J. Abrams' cast, led by Chris Pines and Zachary Quinine, after all, the interest in the fourth Star Trek movie was instigated by Paramount's polling indicating that there was an audience interested in seeing Chris Pine as Captain James C. Kirk and the reunited USS Enterprise crew. Another big screen adventure. A reboot would mean a completely new cast and story possibly not about the Starship Enterprise. Perhaps a relaunch would be more accurate if Star Trek IV indeed the fourth voyage of the Kelvin Timeline crew doesn't happen. Look, Let's be honest about this. The Kelvin timeline, for, for so many people, it was not liked. There was too much of a ripoff of the original Star Trek movies to make it feel like it was an original project. The resetting of the timeline was okay, but stealing from the Wrath of Khan, stealing scenes from the search for Spock, it just it felt so phony. Rebooting the franchise, or the movies anyway, may not be a bad idea when you consider the way Star Trek Discovery, Picard, and now Strange New Worlds, Lower Decks, Prodigy. Star Trek's all over the place. The franchise is just going in so many different directions that they need to start reorganizing things and bringing it more centered. And I honestly think we don't need another Kelvin Timeline Star Trek movie, but we need a brand new way of going forward. Resetting everything would be, in my opinion, the right idea. Now, on a different side of Star Trek, when we're talking about the series, the franchise in general, we have Overlord DVD over here who, as most of us know, has such a... <laughs> passion, a hatred for this franchise and what Alec Kurtzman and Terry Metalis, he believes, has done to it. Now, I agree with him when it comes to Kurtzman. Kurtzman has done a lot of damage to Star Trek, along with J.J. Abrams. However, Terry Metalis, as far as I am concerned, 
was the thing we needed to get Star Trek back on track. And hopefully, we will be getting a Star Trek legacy, not Academy, and not Star Trek Section 31. I don't think these are things that anyone wants. But Doomcock over here believes, through sources he claims are very reliable, that Paramount had a top secret meeting with people excluding Kurtzman. They kept him out of it. And supposedly they did some test screenings for a next generation reboot. Now, that would be pretty good if they tried to modernize it mostly. I mean, the technology and everything would be great. Telling us new stories of the next generation would be fantastic too. But at the same time, if they are trying to change next generation, like they're doing with Strange New Worlds, and changing the whole history, changing the characters around, having them interact with characters that don't belong there. Who knows? Maybe Q will become some kind of an angel, you know, trying to help them on their journeys instead of being the troublemaker that he is. But I just believe that if Doomcock is right about this and that there is a plan to reboot the next generation, hopefully, hopefully they will go back to the basics and stop ruining the classic Star Trek. Next Generation was amazing. Now the first season was rough and something I didn't know until recently was up until the middle of the third season they weren't sure if there was going to be any more Star Trek. Apparently 1, 2, and 3 had issues which totally surprises me when you consider one was, <laughs> it was all over the place. But once we got to season two, it really started to find its footing. But again, according to sources, up to season three, it almost got canceled. Now on a different side of the Star Trek stories here, we got Jonathan Frakes, who wants Star Trek to be more like the classic 70s show. My problem with Jonathan lately is the fact that one he thinks the fans are being very hard on discovery he doesn't think there's anything wrong with it at the same time i'm questioning his judgment when he's throwing his voice to garbage like short treks uh that last one what was that um worst contact the worst animated shorts i have ever seen and jonathan frakes was all on board for making that garbage, which makes me question his judgment on what good Star Trek is anymore. Now, the article is from Giant Freaking Robot, but they're, according to Gizmo, the emotional roller coaster of Star Trek Picard Season 3 culminated with a heartfelt reconciliation between Jonathan Franks, Riker, and Deanna Troy, played by Marina Schertz. The relationship had been strained due to the tragic loss of their son. However, the galaxy was saved and healing began. It has left fans wondering about the next chapter of Riker. I haven't heard anyone ask what the next chapter is about Riker. At the end of the series, it left them playing poker and they were all quite content with the journey being over. So I don't know where this is going or where this is talking about. Okay, so Franks feels like he had a few thoughts on the matter in mind for the show to be able to move forward. Riker would have to be a captain and have his ship. He also suggested that another arguably option would be for Riker to be promoted to Admiral and a liaison between the characters of Star Trek Legacy. It feels to me like there's a real opportunity for three of these Legacy characters, children to carry on and, and sort of be the next generation. You know, I don't know about this. See, again, this is where I get a little concerned about Jonathan's ideas on what Star Trek could be. His, he humorously added that the perfect way to continue the character would involve Riker becoming a sort of a puppet master, really, like Charlie from Charlie's Angels, only orchestrating the adventures and not participating in them. They'd have to come to my office one day a week for a meeting with Riker. That's, that's really dumb. Why would they have to come to your office? 
you've got communications. You can use your video system to talk to them. That's number one. Number two is, if they're out exploring the galaxy, I don't think they have time to come back to talk to you and prop you up. Okay, so I've said it before. I'm not a fan of the idea of a series about Starfleet cadets. I don't think anyone really gives a care about that. At the same time, I'm just not interested in Section 31. Sloan's not in there. I could care less. And as for Star Trek Legacy, I really would love to see that. I really would. But I just think Jonathan's idea on him being like a Charlie from Charlie's Angels, I think that's just him trying to be desperately get, keeping himself involved in any way with Star Trek. Well, tell me what you think. The news that's dropped about Star Trek from the movies to the TV shows, the rumors from Doomcock, I really would love to hear your thoughts and comments on this. So until the next time, my friends, God bless, and I'll talk to you soon.